What is going on? Welcome to another episode of the Door Hardware Nerds. We've got a special uh, guest with us today, John Bedard, and uh, with Simple K, and uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the software um, and learn a little bit more about it. I'm honestly uh, really intrigued about this, uh, and I guess it's not new software, but it's new to the Asa Oblique family, so I'm excited to learn more about it with all of you. <laughs> Um, John, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. Perfect. Well, hello, Benji, and uh, thank you very much again for inviting me uh, on the show today. Um, I am the Simple K Application and Development Manager uh, and newly with uh, the, the ASA Abloy uh, iSecurity Group. Um, I'll, be, I'll be glad to show you, do kind of a little demo of uh, Simple K with you today. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to diving a little bit deeper. Um, can you tell me a little bit about Simple K and uh, um, what it does, where, where it fits into the OS Abloy high security profile? Right. And, and to give you just a little background, we started the Simple K project uh, many years ago. Uh, it was working on a project for the government of Canada for public works, and they were about to receive new master key system for all their buildings in, in the province of Quebec. So they, they were looking to use something different than uh, just Excel spreadsheets to, to manage their uh, key systems. And so they searched for an existing software uh, solution uh, to, do, to do the job and didn't really find exactly what, what they were looking for. So that's wh where we came into play and we offered them to develop the software and to sell them the first license. So that's how we started working with their locksmiths and security people. And really our goal at that point was to make it a software that would uh, allow you to manage keys a little bit like you would do with an electronic card uh, access system with all the information, the, the floor plans, uh, and just making it a very efficient tool. So that's, uh, that's how, how it began. But then from that project, we started working on many other projects for universities, hospitals, uh, airports or correctional facilities, casinos. Um, and then uh, we developed the software through these years with these customers. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, about the uh, evolution of uh, Simple K. That and now let me do the, the share screen. I'll be uh, glad to show you what it looks like today. Yeah, no, please do. I mean, that's that, that truly is remarkable that you've worked with the government to help develop this and you worked directly with their locksmith. So you knew all the pain points of what they were going through and you knew there was a need for something like this out on the market. Um, it, it, absolutely, we knew it, but I would say key control was not considered so important back at the time or security itself. But then over the, the last couple of years, of course, we, we saw the increase in the overall physical security. So and more and more people have to do those security audits. And part of the, the security security audits, we have those key audits because you know you need to know who, uh, who has access to your building. So who has the keys, where they can go with the keys. Um, again, pretty much the same way you would do with an electronic access control uh, system. Yeah, I, I actually tell people all the time, you can have the most high security access control system in the world and if you don't have key control, you don't have security because if you don't have um, control over who has access to those physical access to those doors, that's that's a, that, that's step number one. That's the biggest concern right there. Exactly. And you need to train people, of course, and develop a, a really efficient uh, process or workflow uh, to make it easy for people. Uh, again, when they issue keys, when, to, when they return them. To do the follow up and all that, because we know if it's if it's too com complicated or cumbersome, well, people won't use it. The idea is to keep it simple, right? That's the name, yeah, exactly. And and we have to be careful because in in, in French, when if we say uh, compliqué instead of simple K, it means complicated. So we we try to stick with a simple K then. <laughs> That's funny how that worked out that way. <laughs> And, and so that, that's the home page of the software. And uh, it's, um, as I said, it's a professional software. It's a, a Windows application. It works on Windows 10 or Windows Server, uses a Microsoft SQL SQL database. Um, and we can see on the left side, we have our main toolbar where we find the main sections of the software. So first are uh, keys and systems. And it's really organized 
you have your master key systems or key keying structures, um, then the list of keys, list of duplicates or the existing copies. There's a section for the key rings, another one for the cores. Uh, and on the right side here is a quick action toolbar that can be customized. Um, and I will show you Simple Key has all the, the tools to manage the master keying, but also the workflow. So when you issue keys, but even you can manage the key request, approval process. Uh, so really all the steps. But if we talk about master keying, as we're looking at a list of keys here, uh, if I select that uh, key mark system, for example, and open the master key system generator, because Simple Key has the generator to allow you to create new keying systems. Um, most of the time it will be for existing systems also to look at the keying structure or manage the expansion. Of course, if it's a brand new system, then usually you, you work with the manufacturer to uh, expand the system and provide you with the codes. Yeah. But then sometime or, or another example, when we have data only on paper, instead of typing manually all the codes, we could use the generator to recreate that same system uh, just based on the key bitting array, levels of keying, the code of your top master key, and then it will generate the levels like that. Well, and that right there is gonna save hours of work. That, that is true. And initially we didn't have a generator within Simple K, but the main reason was instead of our customers using another software to do this, we wanted them to have all the tools within the same software solution. Fire. Fire. Uh, and most of the time they'll use it mostly for expansion. So they have an existing system, they import it, but then at least they can see what is still available. Or uh, another example, looking at the page view. So if you click on a page master like this, open the page view, it gives you uh, that layout that locksmiths, they really like this, where they can find the block master codes, the vertical group masters, horizontal uh, row masters and, and things like that. So, oh, wow. And directly from there, you can create those uh, block masters or incidental master keys so if you need them. Uh, for the expansion, let's look at this branch here where you see it's a good example where we're, we're only using one out of four branches. So in the future, if I rekey a building or I just need to add new codes, then I can create another branch here and have the software to generate the next level like that. Oh, wow. It just populated like that with the few clicks of the button. Right, and it will identify if there are max violation codes, depending on what type of system. It's compatible with the most uh, common manufacturers and system types. And so uh, we'll identify with the max and it gives you different other options like that. When you save then the keys will be created um, in the database and we can look at them here in that list of keys. Uh, the data is always presented in data grids like this in Simple K. It's very easy to reorganize the grids as you prefer. You can also sort, uh, search. We have these search boxes on the top right. See where you can add multiple search boxes. Select which column you want to do a search. Let's say we want to sort by or filter by key symbol, anything that begins with. And even if I'm working on a very large master key system, it's very easy to filter and uh, work on one part of the system. Like here, I'm only looking at my AC keys. Uh, and if you want to look at the core pinning, let's say an AC4, you want to look at the core pinning of that, then you have the core pinning calculator right here, uh, where you could zoom in if you want it bigger. And it will give you, this one is an example of a standard core. So pin for AC4 and the masters above. It is an IC, so it has the control key. Um, and then if you need it, you can print that list. Uh, if we work with special cores like cross keyed cores or a no master, we can do that under the cylinder section. So we would okay. do uh, like this example here, AA5X, we do an edit. And uh, it's basically an AA5 core to which we added under associated keys, two additional keys, eight and 12. And if we look at the pinning chart for this, it will show us that we need to add additional pin segments in these chambers. 
But the other thing is it will verify for ghost keys or key interchange. Oh, okay. So, yeah, like we know. It, it, yeah, that's hard to calculate by hand, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. it's <laughs> easier to have the software double check for, for you on that. You know, we always try to avoid cross keying. We know that, but when when it's required, or sometimes to show your end users, like, okay, well, if we need to do a cross keying like that, well, here is what will happen. You'll end up with all kinds of other keys that will operate your core. Yeah, no, I generally never recommend cross keying just because uh, it's so difficult to keep track of those ghost keys when they pop up in your system. Um, but this this makes it a little bit easier to manage. So when you do have that end user that is persistent, like, hey, the president just has to have one key and we don't want to give him a grandmaster because then if he loses it, then the whole system's gone, right? <laughs> the, the, so we want to, um, that, that just makes a lot of sense, makes it easier for um cross king that's that's awesome exactly so this way you're aware of what may happen or if you're you're fine there's no key interchange at all of course if you do a cross key in the same block or so but then that's one of the of the other locks meaning tool i would say that we have in simple k um other than that if we just look at our list of keys let me show you if i select the system that when you look at the keys, you have a lot of information that can be displayed in a grid, like the number of existing copies, uh, to which door it gives access. And if I look at that key AC2, and I would just go to the duplicates, then here are the physical existing copies of that key, oh. copy number one to 10. And this is where we, uh, we have the tracking of each of those. So uh, like copy number one is on a key ring. Those ones are in stock. These ones are issued. We can track our lost keys. Uh, and when we issue the keys, we can do directly in a grid like this. But normally when we issue the keys, we'll do more as a kind of as a workflow where we could receive a key request if we use the web interface portal uh, and even set an approval process. But then in our uh, list of people, oh, and one quick thing about the list of people, it can be connected to a source database. For example, oh. your active directory. This way, you don't have to manually enter those one by one. Um, you, you just link, for example, with Active Directory and have the list of people updated every day. Uh, it will even warn you if an account is disabled on the source. See, it will tell you that it's disabled. You can even get a notification like this account has been disabled on AD and that person still ha has keys. This way, you can follow up uh, to try to recover the keys. Oh, wow. That makes setting up the system so much easier as well when you're able to just, uh, anyone that might be issued a key can just get downloaded into or uploaded into the software. Exactly. And this is how you can get the information, contact info a bit like this. Um, e well, I'll enter correctly. And for example, having the email addresses, uh, especially if we want to use the notifications or reminders, uh, uh, pictures also can be interesting. Down here, it will show the list of keys issued, key rings, items, if we have the item tracking module. And when we issue the keys, then we simply uh, select the person's name. Uh, in my example, I'll do in two actions. I'll, first, I'll assign the keys, which we could do by selecting the keys by their key symbols or key names. Okay. So when you select it, it shows you if you have some available copies in stock. Okay. Right? Otherwise, you can just add them. Uh, and it connects with ITL key cutting machines as well. This way, when you virtually add a key to your database, you can physically send the info to the cutting machine, put the key blank in the machine, and just cut the key at the same time. Wow. Uh, that's like seconds uh, to issue <laughs> a brand new cut key. That's that's remarkable. That, yeah, that's a good, good add-on to that. I mean, good addition to the, the, the whole workflow. Um, so we select the key, or if we do by building in door, what, what we could do is select the, the building name. Say we uh, want okay. to issue a key for that building. Know, you don't have to know the exact key that you're issuing. You can find it within this issuing system. Exactly. You would select, the, for example, the building in door. And when I select it, it tells me what key it is. It will select the low level key, but I, I can go and select one of the master if I, I prefer. Okay. And again, select one that is in stock. 
And in my example, it's like putting those two keys in an envelope, bringing it to the service desk uh, in a temporary status like this. And when I click OK, the software can email that person saying the keys are requested are now ready for pickup uh, at the service desk. Wow. And then when they go to when the key holder would go to, to the service desk there, we just click the uh, issuance tool and select that person's name here in a short list of people having keys uh, pending. If we need to man manage deposits, we can do it there. And then finally, if we click OK, then we have our key agreement form, which could be fully customized. Like you, you put your own logo, change the information, display your key policy. And then if we use a signature capture device, then uh, we can go and, and sign C directly there. Wow. The signature is inserted in the document. As we click save, it will save it and can send a copy by email um, directly to the, to the key holder and also to the manager, depending on the options. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's something we, we have a lot of options to really customize or uh, adapt the workflow. I'm, I'm just blown away already. Uh, just uh, you figured out all the pain points when issuing keys and you've just null, nullified it and made it simple. It, I guess that's the word of the day, right? Simple. <laughs> exactly. We try to focus on that or make it efficient and uh, streamline. Now, if we, as we have the keys issued, if we look here in our list of duplicates, we see that those two keys have been issued. Um, if we look at, for our PDF file, we can find it here, uh, small files. And then uh, finally, if we do a key return, the same way we would just select the person's name, hit return, and then we can select uh, all the keys, key rings, or other equipment that we are returning. Oh, and there's an option for lost. So if they did lose the key, it'll keep it right. Okay. Right. And in the same way, well, if you and if you select lost, then it can pop a lost key fee screen. Uh, and of course, you can take a lot of different notes if you need to fill some kind of report or something because of the loss of a key. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that, that's some examples of the workflow. But again, uh, th those can be adapted. This, let me show you quickly about the buildings and doors because we saw when you selected the, the door, it, it selected the key for you. But to, to have that option, we need to enter the building and door info. Okay. Uh, and how we can do this in the buildings and doors, we have that list of buildings, uh, which you can even include pictures. You can set building managers or approvers, what systems are in the buildings. Then you have your floors and doors. Now in the list of doors, again, it can be a lot of information about your doors or you keep it basic with just door number and uh, some basic info. Okay. But you see, we can include a type of lock, what department it is, what is the designated change key. In that case, the AC9, then we have the masters above, uh, the pictures. Oh, wow. A good way, to, uh, good way to enter the picture is using one of our mobile app for door surveys, so you can do your on-site surveys with that uh, and take uh, pictures, door data, and door hardware information and upload it to your Simple K database. And is that the Simple K mobile app or is that, because um, I know they've integrated with um, opening, uh, opening studios, right? Right, it's still the Simple K uh, mobile app, but, okay. but that's true, we are working with the, the opening studio team to uh, well integrate or have different bridge to transfer some exchange some data between between Simple K uh, and the opening studio. Okay, so and probably at some point out there, mobile app compatible. I mean, the, the opening studio mobile app compatible for with Simple K as well. But even then, having a mobile app when you're creating a system and going out and doing the hardware. Um, uh, like checklist as you're going through, this is really great to have. Um, and that way, when you look back at it, it's so easy to remember that door because you've got the picture, you've got the hardware set, you've got any information that you might need to reorder or work or maintain that door. Um, and, and it's easy nowadays. And, uh, you, and 
normally in the process, they, there is a door survey if it's a, um, for example, on a rekeying project. And so as they do the door survey, just either do it with a tablet or carry a mobile device so you can at least take that information. Um, the other thing, and I'll show you how we can integrate from Excel spreadsheets. So if you already have an architectural survey in Excel that you would like to upload, then also we can do, uh, and that's easy to, to set up the, the templates in Excel. Oh, wow. And that, that's the other way we work on, on getting all the data loaded. Okay. A list of keys, keys issued, doors. On door, you also have the door hardware. So if we look here, we know what's installed on the door. And if actually that's another section at the back, we see the hardware uh, list. But then if we click on this one or double click, then it can pop with more detailed info uh, where we can include also pictures and even PDF uh, technical. Oh, wow. Things. Really to have all the information in one database prior to go on site for repair or maintenance, especially if you uh, the, you need to travel a little bit to go to the, uh, the next building and do the repair, then you can uh, carry all the, the, the info you, you need. The other thing from that list, if we have the floor plans configured, then uh, directly from that list, we can right click we did a search by door number. Now we want to know where is that door located. Uh, we do the finding diagram. It will just pop the floor plan and highlight the door to show you where, where it's located. Wow. Just just keep keeping it simple. <laughs> Making it and, easy. And that's the fun part. Exactly. And that, that's where it looks a little bit like electronic access control because most yeah. of these software, they, they have something similar where, where you click on a door and you have all the info. Uh, this one, the same thing, doing an edit would pop the door information we already saw. You have the core pinning calculator, a core change tool, and very important, the list of who has access. So quickly, yes. you, you can know who has a key to that door, and here is the list. It will just do the cross-reference search and get you the list of key holders having a change key or one of the master. Wow. And that's uh, an example on this, right? In the documents, you do have many different reports that can be created. Of course, uh, then you generate those reports in grids that you can print, export to Excel. History data, it has the full audit trails of all the main transactions on keys, uh, key rings, doors. So you know who did it, when, uh, you can keep that that track. The forms are those documents that we can customize and you see there are different other sections. Uh, quickly about data import, the way it works, you create your template in simple K. Let's say we, we have a door survey and you just go and select the columns you need. So if in our door survey, we have the building, the floor, door number, and let's say we need to add a door description column. We just do it like that. Uh, we need to have the department, we select it. Then we can just go and save and that will create an Excel file with all these columns in which we can paste our data and load it to SimpleK. Um, so if they so already have like a facility management software that has all that information logged in there, they can simply just copy and paste it into SimpleK, right? Exactly. Wow. Exactly, and we do sometimes from all kinds of old software databases so as you said, as long as we can extract it in text, CSV, uh, XML, that we can work it, put it in a spreadsheet, clean it up a little bit, and then we can uh, load to SimpleK. So we use that on well, pretty much all the projects. Uh, other imports will be different preset import methods from different file format that you can import directly in SimpleK. Okay. Um, Finally, one last thing, maybe the security section. It's a multi-user software and it allows you to create your different users, groups of users, and assign your permissions by group where you can really uh, select what each group can see and can do in SimpleK. It can be a very limited access or like a general access on which you define for every section the read, add, modify, delete, or even go in detail and set read and write on some, uh, on, on all the fields. This way you can really share the data with everyone involved in the key management without disclosing too much or disclosing any of the 
the, the sensitive information, like the key cuts, key ways, angles, keep that only for the locksmiths uh, who need that and not, not uh, the other users. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't want that information getting to the wrong hands. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but we need to involve the other people that are part of the key management. Yep. Every, everyone's involved in key management. If you have a key, you're involved in key management. <laughs> well, that's true. And, and we also have tools to do uh, like uh, key audits. And they, there's a web interface, which is a, um, uh, an add-on to Simple Key that allows to do like the key requests, uh, look at personal key inventories. And one of the tool is for the annual key audit. So if you, for example, for example, you want Simple Key to email your key holders, it can send them an email with a link for them to review online their list of keys and they have to accept, or if they deny or decline one of the key, then you can put a reason and you do a follow-up. So it, it helps with the, again, the annual key auditing. Wow, and yeah. It, it was a short, very short overview. I tried to show you some of the main uh, features, tools. It, it has a lot more, of course, and you, we could spend hours uh, oh, yeah. looking at this. This is a locksmith's dream right now. I, I'm, I'm like in a, I, I, I'm speechless. It's so simple uh, to use. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think uh, if, if people were um, interested in a software solution like this or a tool, how would you recommend them taking this to the next level or starting a conversation? Right. Well, uh, first on the website on the simplekey.com, there's all the information in the contact section. Uh, a trial version is available for download. So uh, this way it's, it's uh, pretty much a full feature. It's limited on time. And also it uses a different type of database so that you don't have to install a, an SQL server for the demo, but, but you, can, you can try with this. Um, and also we'll, we'll make some new online tutorials uh, available uh, shortly. The other thing is that you can schedule an interactive web presentation with uh, one of our uh, specialist or expert in key control. <laughs> so we would be glad just because sometimes customers, they have the have different questions about their current situation or current data, how they can gather uh, or organize the data they have now and migrate to a tool like Simple Key. And our team is there to assist uh, and help them in the process. Yeah, and I, I would also just add on, now that you're part of the Asable family, um, you've got the door security solutions team that is going to be out there um, assisting you with this process as well. So I know I know we're doing some trainings uh, to get them up to uh, par to understand how Simple K works, but um, I, I would imagine they could reach out to their local Asabla rep. And, and yes, that's true. They will be able to answer uh, most of the questions very shortly. And the, uh, if I can just say, this has been a need in the market for too long. I'm glad to have Simple K part of the Asable family. Right. No, thank you very much. And, and that's true. Again, it's kind of a niche market or it's really a specialized part of it, which is becoming more and more important, I would say. And uh, uh, we, uh, we develop the expertise in that. And, uh, but, and, and of course, we'll keep developing Simple K because, uh, I mean, it's, uh, there's still, we still have a lot on our uh, suggestion list or wish list. <laughs> so we should be busy for the next couple of years still. Yeah, well, I'm excited to see um, how you grow and uh, how it uh, all falls into place. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And thanks for uh, spending some time with me today and showing me a little bit more about Simple K. This was very informative and hopefully it's informative for the other drill hardware nerds out there as well. Absolutely. And, and thank you very much for the opportunity, uh, Benji. It was a real pleasure.